Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is late, but it is time. We do have a new update for Exodus. Version 2.4.0 is out, and here are a couple of the reasons why you might need to consider to update to it. So let's get started. Hey guys, Wonklo here. I hope all of you are doing well and having a really great day. So, we do have the new release. Version 2.4.0 is out. And we do have plenty of changes, fixes, and yeah, finally a new release. So let's quickly go over what we have gotten in the latest release. First things first, uh, for the developers that's really needed and nice, Anderson built a new artifact where we no longer need to build things ourselves. We can just push a new tag or do things and push it to GitHub. And now GitHub builds for us the firmware automatically. So there's no longer a need for us devs at least to yeah do everything locally. I mean, a couple of us are still doing that, but it is really nice and needed for the convenience of attracting more devs, I, I'd say, into this whole scene, which is nice. So really thanks to you, Anderson. It is really, really lovely and needed. Also, there's something new. So if you do update to the version 2.4.0 now, as soon as your bidex starts up, you will see the OLED bidex screen. It is the logo of the name bidex on the screen, which has been impl implemented by Mutatrum. Thank you for doing that. There is now also a new file called the all-in-one factory file script that I uploaded. It's basically just a modified version of how to build things locally, so not really that important. We do have a couple of enhancements on the chart, as well as a redo of Swarm. So you might need to think about Swarm a second time, because lately we were discussing that if we want to remove Swarm or not, and now we do have fixes for Swarm, which is absolutely amazing. And another important thing here is we do have a complete new XOS theme and we will take a look in this in just a second. Also, we do have now a replace defaults address with a prompt uh, by Alight in 483. So this PR changes the initial defaults from both fields to something that indicates there needs to be something in there. So for example, if you set up UBITX for the first time, uh, there will now be some default prompts for you to understand what you need to put in there. There is now also a update on the info check. So if you now take a look on the settings page and if you want to update and pull the data from GitHub to get the latest release, it will state a small info there. If you do click this button, now your device is connecting to GitHub. This is sort of a disclosure from us that we're not doing anything proprietary here, but we want to give you as much information as possible so that you do understand what's going on in the back. There's also a temp suffix fix uh, written by MRV777. Amazing, so a little bit of an improvement on the temperature. And we will get into this topic really soon because there is something major that you really need to consider. So there are a couple of smaller changes on only gzips, JSON files for removing them um, and removing warnings by Scott. There's also a fix on the ESP now warning by Montratrum, as well as we've moved back to the solo stats by Anderson. So we do have these hyperlinks that you can click if you take a look on the XOS dashboard. And if you scroll down, you do see your primary and your secondary pool, wherever you're connected to currently. And you can click on it to see your current stats. We've moved back to solo stats. So that's also in there. Now there is the primary and the secondary uh, it's been back to human readable code, which is great. And also a couple of RP API fixes that have not been handling correctly or properly by Anderson. So really plenty of bug fixes on this end. There are also a couple of fixes on the CI warnings by Anderson. So uh, we do have clock in and clock out on the ASIC chips and there were a couple of warnings. Now this has been fixed, which is amazing. So you do see it here, guys. Things are improving, things are getting better and better and better. So this is really lovely. Lovely. Let's go ahead and let's see what else we do have in here. There's also now the, the thing that, let's say for example, you do have multiple access points at home, like one in the 
first floor and one on the second floor, for example, and you move your bedex around for just for, for the example here. You are thinking that the thing is connecting from one access point to the other. Originally, there was a bug in it, and now we do have a fix on that. Uh, it's basically a do nothing when roaming, so when searching for a new one, and uh, when you switch to the new access point, like going from the access point of the first floor to the second floor, it now reconnects and keeps you company and keeps, keeps the device company, which is great. There are also a couple of fixes on the changelog fonts, as well as colors to that, and we will dive into this in a, sec in a second. There are also course fixes and attempts to fix course, so this is just some back-end shit and probably most of you don't really recognize what's going on here but that's totally fine uh, if you're really interested in that just check out the github repository which you can find on the github.com slash scott slash esp slash minor releases and then re select the release that you want to take a look on and you can always dive into here and hover over these things or click in them these are pull requests and you can read what's going on there if you don't really want to rely on all the words that i'm saying here now there's also good fix on Swarm. So we now do have a functionality that is sorting your Swarm entries as well as, well as checking for duplicate entries. And if you want to add something that would override it, it doesn't do it. Also, there's an import cleanup, which is just great. So Swarm overall is now performing way better and it's doing what it is supposed to do, which is just awesome. There is also a change on the artifacts again by Anderson. So SSL, like it is, it's just genius what this dude is, is doing here. He fixed so many things. And uh, yeah, also on Swarm, he fixed something but, uh, for the restart. So originally with the fixes on Swarm, there was an issue with the restart functionality. Now this has been fixed as well, which is great. And there are also fix for mobile styles so it turns out a couple of you guys are actually visiting your xos dashboard with your mobile phone i mean sure go for it and uh, now we do have a fix for a better style so it just looks better then we do have a adjustment from the settings for the beam 1370 by me um there is a little bit more going on in the background. So settings and frequencies are multiplied by a divisor of 6.25. And a couple of these frequencies that you would try to set on your bidex, for example, 596 megahertz, uh, these are not working. I'm not really sure why, and we are digging into that. But for now, they have been removed, and you can use all the other settings that are in there. There's also a hash rate check for the self-test now by Benjamin, which is great, as well as the most important thing why you should upgrade to the version 2.4.0 is there's a temp sensor fix. So originally on the gamma device, your temp temperatures would jump around like crazy. The reason being for that is that the temperature sensor was not been used correctly or basically one register of the beam 1370 was not set correctly and therefore this caused the temperatures to float around in not not really big amounts but in noticeable com amounts i'd say also there are a couple of additions to the drop down menu so these are all the changes in general and now let's go over and take a look on the beautiful new xos theme here you go this is the new style of xos and maybe some of you guys don't like it that's totally fine it is a little bit different it's more in the theme of bit eggs which is great so this one definitely does have another style or another filling to it i'd say it is also a little bit better like we now do see all the hash rate that we do have here with the big red line we have our average hash rate with the dotted line and then the white line is our temperature and you do see it is way more stable it is not really bouncing around this is due to the fact that we have now fixed the temperature sensor and the temperature reading and down here if uh, everything else stayed the same so if you go over to Swarm now, and if I would scan for different devices, I believe all the other devices that I do have are currently not available, uh, or currently not running, so uh, nothing should show up. Yeah, it, it's just its own device that is showing up. But have you seen that? I didn't collect anything. It is automatically scanning, and it is rescanning every 30 seconds if you keep this web page open, which is great. 
and uh, don't worry about the version here uh, this is just some local build stuff but yeah let's go over to network everything stayed the same over here settings is quite interesting uh, we do have a couple things changed here but overall things stayed the same and the logs is the last interesting part i'd say if you now click into the logs and wait for a couple of seconds you do see there's now a new style to it it is green when everything is okay it is yellow when there is some sort of an information and it's red if there is any sort of an error so these are all the changes on xos and i hope you love it and every other dev as well hopes that you guys love it with that thank you guys for watching and see you on the next one